You're listening to the PRO Media Network. The next level in entertainment. Game report on the PRO Media Network. I'm Big Q, chiming in with y'all today. How y'all doing today, sports family? And co hosting with me, as always, is DC. How you doing, my brother? I'm good, man. DC is in studio as well with us, and today we'll be uh, covering Podcast 152. That's right, Podcast 152. The Pelicans win over. The Milwaukee Bucks in Milwaukee, 123 to 121 in overtime. We'll have that game for you today with stats, facts, and breaks down, breakdowns. Before we get into it, we like to give you a round of applause as usual for your support, for sharing the show, for donations of the show, and everything like that. There, uh, thank you very much. And in today's Pelican Post Game Report for this Monday, February the 26, 2018. Podcast 152, like we said earlier, we'll cover the Pelicans 123 to 121 win over the Milwaukee Bucks in overtime. And they get five straight. The Pelicans go five straight uh, with that win as well. And today's rundown, we'll cover Drew Holiday playing at an all-star level, both offensively and defensively. We'll break down that topic and get into it. Also, we'll talk about Rondo. Rondo's leadership and his offensive ability. He has stepped up. In a major the offensive fashion. Offensive ability. What about the defensive ability? Right. As Rondo's well, as been, well. been putting them clamps but, down. Man. But defensively, Rondo is always showing up. Well, That's he's always to me. showing up offensively, you know, too. But, uh, but outside of that, Anthony Davis, we're going to talk about Anthony Davis and his defense, DC. His defense on Giannis, the Greek freak, Giannis. held to 20 points. Now, holding Giannis to 20 points is like, very freakish. It's like holding uh, 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 Giannis to 10 points. Because usually this guy can go for 30 or 34. If he had put up 30, 34 points, they would have won this game. But the, the Pelicans defense led by Anthony Davis, they constantly they can't compound leave, uh, him. can't leave out of that too, man. He had four blocks right. in that game. So that's what I'm saying. That the Pelicans defense, along with Anthony Davis, stifled Giannis to 20 points in the game. And, four, and, and they were definitely certain to not let him beat him. We'll cover that. And one of our topics, we'll talk about Elvin Gentry gettiness. Now, this is one of DC's <laughs> co- <laughs> DC's topics that he want to talk about. The gettiness of old man L Gentry, <laughs> <laughs> Grandpa Gentry. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna talk about that today. Okafor, 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 Silas, the old oak tree. Okafor. The Pelicans are four and zero since installing Okafor in the starting lineup. Mm. Turned out to be a revolutionary move for Grandpa Gentry. You think we could get as and, good as the Rockets with the Capella in the line? I don't know. Uh, we can only hope. Know. Also, we have a little news on Okafor as well that we're going to discuss is the fact that he has signed for the duration of the year. So that's oh. good news as well. So we're going to cover that as well. Overtime drama. The Pelicans obviously like the overtime they drama. For one more year, though, <laughs> they they <laughs> they love the overtime drama. They love playing extra minutes. Obviously, as they play another overtime. And what Drew Holiday said. <laughs> well, see, he tired of these overtime <laughs> games. <laughs> we're going to talk about that. And then also, we're going to have interviews from Coach L. Gentry, uh, Drew Holiday, the star of the show today, and Anthony Davis. Wait, wait, and hold up. You got to say that again. What happened? The star of the show today, Drew Holiday. You don't have no problem saying that? Nope. Not ap- not a, not not uh-huh. one when he plays like this, and uh-huh. that's always been my thing, D.C. I don't know why you think otherwise, but I've because always, always said Because you always give me stuff. <laughs> Because Drew I Holiday. always said that Drew Holiday was capable of playing like this. This is the best version that we've seen of Drew Holiday since his All Star year with Philadelphia. This right. is the, by far the best. He's playing better than that year, and that's what I always seen that for Drew Holiday. Then we're gonna get more into that. Also, if you if your bellies are not full yet with all those Pelican topics, we're gonna have to give you one more, and that'll be we'll preview the Phoenix matchup tonight in the Smoothie King Center. Between the Phoenix Suns and the Pelicans, we'll break it down with facts, uh, stats, facts, breakdowns, and then we'll offer our predictions as well at the end of the uh, second segment. Now, 
Without further ado, let's get right into it. Pelican Post Game Report, show 152. Pelicans 123-121 win in overtime, D.C., over those uh, Milwaukee Bucks. Drew Holiday, obviously, you look at it. Drew Holiday, the star of the show, 36 points, nine rebounds. He had six assists, didn't turn the ball over, had two turnovers, very efficient. And then not to mention, he was as impactful on offense as he was defensively. Right. Okay, you want to speak to that? Oh, definitely. The Pelicans played like a million bucks. Get it? But uh, going in the overtime, man, we seem to be a force to be reckoned with. And uh, Drew Holiday stepped up huge, man. Uh, They played horrible in the first quarter. You know we always got to have one bad quarter. Right. But the thing to me, the real staple to this game, was the fact that they put up the largest amount of points they ever put up. Uh, I think tied for the season uh, in the third quarter. 38 right. points, man. That's a lot of points, right. man. Right, and this is the, a I believe, the, the fifth time we've come back from uh, 18 points or more right. this season. That's that's huge, man, and that goes to uh, – I almost felt like we predicted it because we talked on the last show about how resilient the Pelicans are. Right. And they came out and gave us another – Resilient effort, and Drew Holiday even commented on their resilience and why they can win in overtime. So, resilience, <laughs> you know, is, is the key. And uh, that's the buzzword. And defense is as hard as as difficult or crazy as that may seem with a, a hundred and twenty one point <laughs> right <laughs> giving up. Uh, defense, man, won us this game. Well, I mean, that's actually a, a, a excellent uh, commentary because when I'm looking at Drew Holiday over the last several games. He's averaging 24.1 points a game, about five rebounds and 6.6 assists while shooting over 50% from the field over the last seven games. So Drew Holiday has really took his his game to that ultimate level that we all knew and pushed uh, and really said that he could. And then you got to look at it is the fact that Andy Davis's numbers even over the last four contests averaging f- almost 43 points a game. Matter of fact, 42, 42.8 points over the previous That's insane, four. Man. This is the last four game averaging almost 43 points a game, Andy Davis. Then he slowed down Giannis. Let's listen to Coach L. Gentry's take on the game. Uh, and see how he feels about his I don't know. I don't know if that's the good news or the bad news. Uh, we seem to find a way to get into these overtime games. But, uh, you know, to me, the big thing is is that if, if you look back, I think that's the, the, the fifth time that we've been down at least 18 and come back and won. So uh, the good news we've been able to do that. The bad news is I don't, I don't think we want to keep getting down 18. So. Uh, but I thought it was good. The, 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 the first half, I thought the thing that bothered us most is not so much what they were doing, but we were turning the ball over. You turn the ball over against this team where you got Bledsoe and you got Giannis and Middleton on the wing coming at you. You have no chance to defend it. So I just felt like if we could ever eliminate the turnovers and just be you know, solid in our offense and, and take good shots, that we would have a chance to get back and set our defense. And if we did that, we would be okay. What were your impressions of Drew? It seemed like this was one of the best games of his career, I thought, today. Well, you know, he's played well the whole year. Sure. And, uh, you know, maybe a little bit better than he normally would, but he's had some great games for us. And when we needed him most, uh, you know, I thought he, he went and got us baskets and made plays. But, you know, to me, the big thing was, I think the way he played on the defensive end was just as important as the baskets that he had. You talked to him before the game because you were asked by multiple people about Giannis. Um, did, did you like the way that see, he had a six for eighteen game? And, um, I'll take him. <laughs> no, I can't say that. No. No, I can't. no, no, no. I mean, no. He he uh, he is a he's a tremendous player, and I thought we did a good job on him defensively, but. You know, at the end of the day, he still can take it where he wants to and get it to the basket and do a lot of good things. Uh, I mean, you know, I, I thought Drew and AD and the guys that got him did a great job on him today, but, uh, you know, that's one comment. And uh, I just thought the big thing for us, like I said, was that when we eliminated the turnovers, I thought we were able to then get into – you know, number one, a running game, and then number two, uh, I thought we did a good job of executing in the half. Court. People have talked about how Mirich just has played with good defense, and like he was physical, really physical against Blake Griffin, for example. But he had that one huge block tonight. And what were your thoughts on that play that he made there? Uh, once again, I, I, I said to everyone that you can't take a stat sheet and look at it and determine if he played well or not. You know, I think 
you have to look at the overall game. And when you look at the overall game with him, for what we need to have done for us to win and what he brings to the table, it's been great. So I don't even know. I, I have no idea what he shot or the rebounds that he got. I just know that when we need him most, uh, he always seemed to come through for us. Coach, talking about bringing something to the table, what are your thoughts so far on Walt Lemon? Is kind of That's L. Gentry, man, uh, giving big, no, big credit I, I to a lot of the Pelicans, especially uh, Nikolai Miritich. Who showed up uh, defensively in this game and played really well? Although he finished the game with 14 points, he had seven rebounds and four blocks, so he continues to show up. 37 minutes, big boy minutes there. By the way, he shot pretty bad, five out of 15 from the field, one of eight from downtown. But he's a hustle guy. He get he made he gets it in 14.7 rebounds, four blocks from Nikolai Miritich, uh, according to El Gentry. Uh, Let's let's move into our next topic, DC, before we play um, our next interview from Drew Holiday. Rajon Rondo showing up in a major way. Now, Rajon, uh, 36 minutes, he was 7 of 11, 2 of 3 from downtown. He finished with 16 points, 12 assists, although he had six turnovers. But he had 16 points, 12 assists, and eight rebounds, almost a triple-double from Rajon Rondo, plus his offense. His offense was there. His defense was there. What should take on Rondo here? Um, I think Rondo played amazing, man. Uh, it's another one of them games. He almost had that triple double, you know. Is uh, Rondo and Ref Form looking like the Boston Rondo to me? He was locking up on the defensive end. Um, he he was on Bledsoe at times. I seen him on Giannis, mm-hmm. and we would get nervous. But he actually did a pretty good job on a dude that was like six ten. I was like, wow, man, look at Rondo. He forced Giannis to pass the ball, you right. know. Um. Then he hit that amazing uh, three pointer, and Alvin that Gentry tree, commented yeah. on it. Uh, yeah, that bank. But they told him maybe you should go class, <laughs> and it wound up happening like gotta, not long after gotta, the timeout. You got to call that man, right? He did. It, it was lucky, right. <laughs> but they they told him to go glass, and it's just funny that uh, he, he did. accidentally did. Right. But uh, I, I think Rondo, his he's a winner, man. I don't I don't know how else to explain it. Like his stuff he does that's bigger than the stats. Like, when you watch him out there, he makes so many little plays. Like, he had a a rebound that could have ended the game for us. Like, you know, that then that gets go, that goes unmentioned, you know, most of the time, stuff like that. He did almost throw, a, throw the game away on that turnover, but that's probably one of the few mistakes that he made the whole night. So, um, yeah. Rondo played amazing, man. He played uh, at the old school, all-star Rondo level. And if we can get that out of him, at least uh, maybe – 15 more times this year, we're going to be looking pretty good in this playoff. Huh? No doubt about it. He finished with six turnovers on the night, but when it's all said and done, he made the right plays. Let's talk to a man who had very few turnovers. Had one, actually two turnovers, but they were coupled with 36 points, nine wow. rebounds, six wow. assists, six of 31 from the field, two of five from downtown, and 42 minutes of action. The player of the game and game leading scorer, Mr. Drew Howard. I just think as a team, we figured it out. Yeah. Um, figured out what we had to do, stop turning the ball over, uh, rebound, get back in transition. And from there, you know, lanes open up. And um, even though they're, they're a lengthy team uh, defensively, um, if we get them early in transition, then, then you know, I mean, it's to our advantage because we, we push the pace so well. What type of statement do you hope that this makes uh, coming back from a 17-point deficit uh, coming into the second half? Um, I mean, we've done it a couple times. We did, we've done it a few times. Uh, uh, I, I do think that we are resilient as a team. Uh, in diversity, I think we do really well, so uh, it shows our character. You guys have had so many close wins lately, like you, you just kind of alluded to. Um, you feel like you guys are just coming up with a lot of, AD called it winning basketball, basically just saying that it just seems like you guys are coming up with a lot of plays in the last couple minutes of games. Like Miritich had a great block of Middleton, and um, Rondo had a tap out. It just seems like there's just extra plays that you guys are making that are leading to some of these wins. Right, um, and, and it's as a team. And you, I mean, you have to be it. As a team, you have to be happy about that. So it's not just one person, but uh, for everybody to come together as a team and, and play well has been been awesome. And that is winning basketball, the, the things that don't show up in the statue. Drew, I want to ask you about playing with Anthony Davis. Coach, before the game, mentioned that he kind of like, takes it for granted just what he's able to do. Do you ever feel like that? Just you know, this recent stretch of his not been so incredible that you're just kind of like, you know, this is just what he does. Uh, I think as a team, we've been trying to get him the ball as much as possible um, to, to be able to, for him to carry it. Uh, we, know we know with the market's out, uh, that kind of puts a little bit more of a load on him. And, and I know for me and, and Rajan, uh, we, we try to take off some of that load, and, and other guys do too in different areas. But 
anthem is on the court and off the court, so uh, to feed him the ball, uh, he, he leads us and, and he kind of uh, pushes us forward. So uh, just to be able to keep him on the field and get him anywhere, he, 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 he does everything. It seems like he's kind of falling under the radar a little bit in terms of the MVP discussion. Do you think that you, know, you should be up here? For sure, for sure. Uh, but we've been doing it all season. You know, the ways we can, and again, we had the market. That's Drew Holiday, man. That's Drew Holiday talking about his role in Rondo and a few other teammates and whatnot. But if Holiday keep playing like this, man, I mean, the Pelicans are a dangerous team. But we're going to cover other topics on the other side of the break. We'll talk about Anthony Davis and a few other Pelicans. When we return after this break, you're listening to the Pelican Post Game Report on the PRO Media Network. Get all the latest news and updates from your New Orleans Pelicans at the Pelicans Review. The new and official Pelicans Daily Journal, covering everything Pelicans. Attention, everyone. Get, get breakdown on games, free agent signings, and potential moves. Unbiased opinions and straight up facts with statistical analysis from Chief Bound. Go to www.thesportsdaily.com forward slash Pelicans dash I dash view. I'm a Saints and Pelicans fan, so the only podcast I can get my fix is The Sports Coma with Big Q. The guy's intense, funny, and they always keep it real. Check out The Sports Coma with Big Q and the guys. What's up, sports world? It's Big Q from The Sports Coma with Big Q and the guys. Talking to you about the website, theposhlifestyle.com. That's right, poshlifestyle.com. A great website where you can get great products at great prices. They sell organic herbs, vitamins, supplements, water filters for your home, EMF and cell phone radiation protection, healing magnetics, and healing crystals, personal protection devices like cell phones, stun guns, and mace spray, organic deodorants, shampoos, soaps, toothpaste, and more. They also sell 10A grade Brazilian hair. 10A music is available now. All kind of the latest downloadable mixtapes. So what are you waiting for? Head on over to theposhlifestyle.com. That's the posh lifestyle. Life spell with a Y. L Y F E style.com. Put in the sports coma for the 10% discount on your purchase. It's a win-win. So get your mind and body right with the posh lifestyle. Get ESPN or Fox. Get straight sports talk from the Sports Coma with Big Q and the guys. You're listening to the Pelicans Post Game Report on the PRO Media Network for all things Pelicans. That's right. Welcome back to the Pelican Post Game Report on the PRO Media Network. We recap it. New Orleans Pelicans 123 to 121 overtime win over a very difficult Greek freak led Milwaukee Buck team. And Jabari Parker was back. He was he played really hard in this game. He came off the bench with 18 points in 24 minutes, and he was a a, a problem for the Pelicans until they were able to kind of make it difficult for him. Greek Freak finished with 20 points, six assists, and four rebounds. The Pelicans really did a good job in pushing him down. 25 from Chris Middleton, 20 from Eric Bledsoe in a losing effort. Besides Drew Holiday's 36 points effort, you had Andy Davis, 27 points, 13 rebounds on a day. He had two blocks, two steals, and 43 minutes of action. AD turned it up big time in the win. We'll, have, we'll play uh, AD in just a second. Also, outside of that, Etwan Moore on his 29th birthday, he had 11 points. Happy birthday to Etwan Moore. He had 11 points on 4 of 11, shooting 2 of 6 from downtown. He's been struggling, been struggling, but he added 11 points in 36 minutes. Off the bench, Nikolai Miritich, 37 minutes, 14 points, 7 rebounds, 4 blocks. And then we had a couple of 6-point scores in Darius Miller, Ian Clark, and then 5 from Sheik Diallo. Uh, in 10 minutes for Sheik. So with all that said, being Sheik said, uh, with all that being said, the Pelicans did an excellent job 
and handling their business. Before we get into the rest of our topics, we're going to play our final interview. Here's Anthony Davis telling us what he thought after the win. 17-point deficit overcome. What, what type of statement do you guys hope to make, especially coming into the second half of the season? Well, we just playing a lot of defense. Um, you know, we're imposing our will, knowing that um, you know, we're kind of undersized, but we're doing a great job of helping each other on the defensive end and then making plays offensively. And what do you think of the performance that Drew had tonight? He's been playing really well lately, but it seems like, you know, this is one of the best things he had this year. Yeah, um, he kind of just took over the game, um, honestly, and made big play after big play. And um, on both ends of the floor, we just was rolling with him. Um, you know, I couldn't get it going. Um, and I just trying to do the little things, helping defensively, um, you know, rebound the basketball. But, um, you know, he stepped up big tonight. You, you mentioned doing the little things. It seemed like you guys have had a lot of close wins lately. And today it seemed like you had a lot of big plays, like Miritich had a defensive play against Middleton. Rondo had that tip out. It just seems like you guys are coming up with a lot of those plays in key situations. Playing winning basketball, um, that's what it takes to win. Um, you know, you got to do the little things to win. Um, you know, like you said, uh, Rondo getting that tip, you know, give us another possession. Um, you know, uh, Nico playing great defense on Chris. Uh, he's been going to the same move all game, making this. So, you know, it's a little thing that we try to do to get wins. And you've been on an amazing stretch the last few games. Just how much of a responsibility do you feel to kind of, you know, step up and lead this team without Boogie to, to make sure that you guys stay in the playoff room? Well, I just try to go out there and play. Uh, just do my part. You know, everybody's stepping up, um, playing big. So uh, it's not just me. It's everybody who's who's um, playing with a lot of confidence and stepping their game up to make make up for Boogie's absence. But um, as far as me, I'm just going out there and just, and just doing my part. When, when you get down like this, do you feel, you know, in the game, do you kind of think about we need to get this one because of how tight the playoff race is? No, we just go out and play. Um, we get down. Um, basketball is a game of runs, you know, and we never think like, oh, man, we losing. You know, we always say that we're not winning right now. That's it. So we go out there with that type of mindset. We go out there and try to make sure that we cut into the lead and then take the lead at some point in the game. What did you like about your guys' defense at, in the second half on? It seemed like... That was a big reason we were able to get back in the game in the third quarter. Um, I don't think it was our defense. Uh, so we played pretty good defense in the first half. We just turned the ball over. Um, you know, turnovers. You know, they were getting a lot of points in, in fast break and in transition off our turnovers. So um, we just made sure that we got shots at the back every time down the floor. That's Anthony Davis, people, chiming in and giving his opinions on what's happening. In, uh, in the game and around his team, but Andy Davis, if you look at what the Pelicans were able to do in this game, they 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 were they were absolutely awesome. Forty seven, almost forty eight percent from the field they shot versus Milwaukee's forty five percent. Uh, that means forty eight percent versus forty five percent from the field. They were didn't shoot that well from downtown. It was seven uh, ten of thirty. That's about thirty three percent versus seven of twenty five for the Milwaukee Bucks. They were terrible twenty eight. Uh, percent from the field the pelicans however uh were 11 for four from downtown the milwaukee bucks got a crap load of um uh opportunities to go to the line they had 29 attempts from the free throw line they hit 26 of 29 which helped prolong this game the pelicans did out rebound the bucks really big by 13 64 to 51 that was major 22 assists they were usually down from the 25 or so they usually dish out on the game. They did have 17 turnovers. They did have 15 turnovers or 14 turnovers at halftime. And they only turned the ball over a few more times after that. So they had, you know, they actually tamped down on the turnovers, had 17 points, uh, 17 turnovers, which allowed 21 opposition points versus Milwaukee's 14 turnovers to 20 points. So that kind of neutralized things. The Pelicans won on fast break points, 20 points to 14. And they also won the battle in the paint, 66 to 56 in this contest. So the Pelicans shut out the Bucks on the season series. They beat them in the first game, 115 to 108. They closed them out, 123 to 121. And the Bucks. All quality team. They had Jabbar Parker that came back. He contributed 18 points, like I said earlier. Today, so the Pelicans, D.C., they had a pretty decent game. Closing thoughts on this Pelican win uh, uh, on this one here. Another excellent showing from the Pelicans, man. Uh, this is probably uh, the toughest game they had at this point right now. The next three games, it tails off a little bit. So I think it was an excellent way to go in there and, uh, on the road and 
take out the Milwaukee Bucks and feel like a million bucks do it and, and walk on out of there. Very true. Um, and one little sidebar information on this game, dealing with Anthony Davis and the defense. I know we lost, glossed over it in the topic section, but if you look at some of the defense, how the Pelicans played this, they were determined to not let Giannis take over this game. 20 points from Giannis, uh, the Greek freak in this game, due to the fact that Anthony Davis was largely matched up against him. And when he turned and went to the, the paint, AD was there. Also, Rondo was there. Etwan Moore was there. They had an eye to, to limit what Giannis would try to do, allowing him to – just holding him to 20 is basically like holding him to 10 if you don't let him explode for 30 to 34 points on you. Real easy, this guy can do that. Anyway, let's move on to our next topic. We talk about uh, L. Gentry's giddiness. Uh, as AD chimed in, AD, what's your commentary on the giddiness? I know that was something that you wanted to discuss. Uh, Al Gentry happy, and uh, I don't want to see a happy, happy Al Gentry. I'm sorry, man. Uh, I want to see him man, angry. what's wrong with letting Grandpa be happy, bro? Because I, I want to see him angry and, and, and frustrated and motivated because that's what turned the, uh, the season around. So I want to see him keep that intensity that he had or whatever type of pressure he's been putting on the team to get up to performing to this point. Because, you know, usually when we get a little happy, we have a tendency to uh, get a little lax. If that's the case, we face Al Gentry already too laid back. <laughs> so if that's the case, well, you know, if you're getting a little too happy there, hopefully that don't contribute to a, a trap game against Phoenix. We'll preview that. That's, exactly. That's week. my point exactly. Okafor, let's talk about Okafor. Okafor, uh, the team is 4-0 since signing Okafor to the first 10-day contract. Of course, he signed another 10-day contract uh, not too long ago. It should ago. be like 5-0, huh? Well, it's 4-0. Or not they on the five and five game winning streak? He didn't start the first game there against New Jersey. He didn't start well, he that game. Team, though, right? He was on the team, right. but didn't well, start. Know, since but didn't start. Him. But he's since he's on, since man. you start signed good over four, they're man. five and zero. Oh, but since he started, they're four and zero. Oh. Either way, we'll take either one of those. Now the good news on the backside of his his hard work and his dedication to come back in the game. Okafor is signed for the duration of the season. It's official today. He's signed for the rest of the season. And that's a very good thing for the team that have done to sign Okafor because he's been, he's brought the defense, he's brought energy and effort. And I remember Okafor when he was with the Hornets early on. He must have been in pain or something because I've never seen Okafor as uh, jumping around and doing the kind of stuff he doing running since he was in college. Yeah, yeah that's how so, he looked like in college. Right. So, uh, D.C., quickly, uh, thoughts on Okafor signing for the rest of the year, and we'll run oh, through these that's, topics. That's amazing, man. I wish we could have signed him for another year. I think he should have been uh, extended for next year at, at the least. Um, the way he's playing right now, I don't see any signs of it slowing down, but I guess we got to see. Got about 27 more games left, so they want to see what he looked like at the end of the season. Okay, let's keep it moving. Um, the next thing we're going to talk about is the overtime drama with the Pelicans. The Pelicans – Obviously, seem to like this overtime drama that they be going in. Of course, they were able to uh, uh, get over the Bucks with the overtime win. Of course, wasn't too long ago we had what, what was wasn't it the Heat, the 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 Heat matchup yeah. went into overtime. Then we had uh, what was prior to that the Nets. Was it the Nets or the Pistons? Was it the Pistons? I don't know. We have so many overtime. Right. So man. I mean, you had you had I, I know for certainly it was the Nets. They went in the double overtime with the Nets. Uh, so. Uh, like I said, it, it's Numbers been probably get way up if you start counting the overtimes too. We had a, a couple of over, double overtimes. So what's the what's the haps with that with the with the the Pelicans? Of course, I knew, we heard, we knew what Drew Holiday said about that situation. Yeah, he uh, said he tied overtimes. <laughs> well, I mean they they didn't, but that's a that's just a remnant of the fact that you had you left one less play on the on the on the court that you could have made, one free throw that you might have missed, right. a layup that you might have missed, a defensive play that you didn't uh, sell out to. A bad three pointer when you shook off two defenders and had a wide open three that you could have hit the seal right. in regulation. So that's a result. You agree with that? I agree with that. Uh, it's it's I say about seventy thirty thirty percent on the players, seventy percent on coaching because I feel like a lot of fundamental things uh, late in the game when the emotions are heightened and the players' uh, energy levels ended up. You know, you got a little nerves going on. Game is uh, coming down to the wire. I think we need to do a better job coaching to have them set up for uh, for certain situations and to prevent mental mistakes. So that's really why I feel like we keep going to overtimes. We had a game in the bag, and we make some mental mistakes and let the team get back into the game, like fundamental stuff, like, uh, you know, guarding a person like Dwayne Wade on the floater. Right. After, after he hit one earlier. Like, I, I don't understand. Yeah, that, 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 he's the king of that move. So, I mean, but uh, moving forward up, uh, 
We're looking at El Gentry, and of course, you we 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 care what them and call them Grandpa Gentry and the likes. But uh, El Gentry, should the Pelicans resign to El Gentry? Is you know, I know a few weeks ago, a lot of people was calling for his scalp or whatever's left of it. But I'm, uh, I, but now you know it's a since the Pelicans are for a five game winning streak, they're looking good. They they possibly a six game winning streak. Uh, going into it, they could beat Phoenix and go into San Antonio, which that they're gonna start that four game road swing. Starting that road, that four game road sweep, string on a six and O mark, a, a, a streak, it's quite possible. Should El Gentry come back quickly? I still think it's up in there at this point because um, we've seen the Pelicans maybe not this big of a swing and this much momentum, but we've seen them play amazing before. And then the ceiling come caving in like it did that one time before um, during Mardi Gras. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, <laughs> you ain't no telling. And I think that was truly a turning point. If you look at it, I think that was a turning point for the season when that happened, man. Like, they, uh, they're like a totally different team from that point. But um, it's still up in there. I, I say if he wins a playoff game, at least one, all playoff series, he definitely deserves to come back. Anything short of that, no. Okay, that's it. I, I'm going to have to agree with that as well. I think he'll, he'll take a little bit more before we resign him back. Although I like like the team, like how the team is playing, and I would love to see what they look like with Miritich and all those guys incorporated and look with amazing. DeMarcus Cousins like, and all that. I would love to like, see though, that. That's so. what I'm concerned about. What right. are the other teams going to look like? Because yeah. we can't seem to stop anybody. <laughs> okay. And we have some pretty, you know, we got some, some good defenders. So I'm trying to figure all that out. All right, let's let's go into our next and final subject. We're gonna preview the Phoenix Suns matchup tonight in the in the Smoothie King Center against the Phoenix Suns. Suns coming into the contest 18 and 43, 19 and 20 in away games. Currently, this team is on a on a nine game losing streak. One and nine the last ten contests. They average 104 points a game. Give up 113 points a game. That'll definitely uh, kick your butt. Not to mention they uh, they shoot forty four percent from the field. They average forty four rebounds a game, twenty one assists per game, four and a half blocks, six point seven on uh, steals, and uh, they like I said they're uh, eighteen and forty three. The Pelicans did beat the Suns early this year, one fifteen and ninety one, pretty handily. And Phoenix sit right now eighteen forty three. Losers of nine in a row at the bottom of the Pacific standings. Golden State, of course, is the top team there, followed by the Lakers, uh, the Clippers, who are 31 27, the Lakers 25 34, Sacramento 18 41, then Phoenix and the Cellar at 18 43. They're not a very good basketball club. Mm-hmm. Losers of, uh, like I said, nine games in a row. Now, coming into this one, the Pelicans looking good. They're on five game winning streak. A lot of people pick the New Orleans to handle business with this team. New Orleans averaging 11, uh, 112 points a game while giving up 111 points a game. 48% from the field. Man, that is awesome. That is the percentage they're shooting from the field. 48% from the field. Uh, that's just uh, un- We got a team full of Steph Curry, huh? That's unbelievable, <laughs> man. 44, they average about 44 rebounds a game, 26 uh, uh, assists per game, which is good for a second behind Steph Curry's Golden State Warrior Club. Five and a half on the blocks, eight r- steals a game, winners of five in a row, six and four the last 10 games. DC, with all that being said, and with all that being broke down, with all that going around, who wins this game and um, why? I'm going to go out and say the Pelicans win this game. Uh, I don't know if we're going to make it interesting or not. We seem to love to play up or down to our composition, just like the Saints. I guess uh, that's why Tom Benson owns them. But um, I think the, the Pelicans win this game. For one, we have a little bit of a niche with Alvin Gentry being a coach there. Um, he's familiar with a lot of players uh, that, that are still around. That was a long time ago there. now. Um, I'm pretty sure he knows about Booker which is pretty much the number one uh, option. And a few of them other guys, I'm sure, still probably was on the team when he was there. I don't think they have a completely uh, different roster. They still have some of the players. Um, Plus, he's familiar with the organization and the way they like to do things. Uh, They're going to Phoenix, right? Uh, No, Phoenix is coming here. Oh, they're coming home. Oh, so, yeah, yeah, we we got them at home, so we got the home field advantage going uh this is a potential trap game because every we all know uh the dog uh the, well the sun shines on the dog's ass at least once every once in a while so they didn't lost 
nine games. Uh, I know they're tanking. The organization wants them to tank, but how do players feel about that? I mean, they still have pride. They want to win some games. So, exactly. Um, the coach may put them in bad positions, but they're still going to go out there and give they all because who wants to be a loser, right? So uh, this is a potential trap game, but I'm more afraid of the Dallas Mavericks game coming up than this game because we have some familiar – familiarity well, I don't know why I can't ever say that word <laughs> with the Suns and uh, I think we're going to be able to take them out man if we can just neutralize Devin Booker Devin Booker is the key to the whole matrix for uh, Phoenix he's averaging about 24.4 points a game behind him is TJ like Warren need about two more of him yeah, yeah, two more of him. T.J. Warren's not far behind in production. He's the 19 points a game. Then there's Alfred Payton coming in there averaging about 17 points a game. And then there's Josh Jackson with his 11 points a game. So with all that being said, yeah, he's full of potential, 18 in 43 fifth in the Pacific Division. And, of course, D.C., you say the Pelicans are uh, going to win the game. Now, I have to, I'm going to get my analysis on the game as well because the way I see it is, Andy Davis recorded a game high 23 points with nine rebounds, two assists, and one block when he played them. Uh, this team uh, earlier this year, DeMarcus Cousins had 19 points, 10 rebounds, six assists in that game. Drew Holiday had 18 points in the game. Then TJ Warren had a team high of 18 points in the Phoenix loss. Devin Booker was held to just 13 points, four of 13 shooting, or five from the three point range. Don't count on that happening again, people. Then on February 6, 2008, New Orleans defeated the Suns 132 to 130 in double overtime. 132 points with the third highest total in franchise history. Elvin Gentry is 13 and 12 uh, all time against the Suns. Interim coach Jay Toronto is 3 and 4 all time against New Orleans. My call on this game is that the Pelicans will not allow this to be a trap game. I think they'll be definitely looking out for this Phoenix Clubs team. Uh, they're on a, a nine-game losing streak, so they're looking to break that nine losing streak. I just think that the Pelicans realize how important it is because if you look at the statistics and you look at the standings as it stand right now, the New, Orleans, Seven, the New Orleans Pelicans move up to number six currently. They're at number six. We're number six. You have Houston sitting at 46 and 13, followed by Golden State Warriors. You got San Antonio. You have Minnesota, Portland, and then New Orleans sits at 33 and 26. One game back of Portland, by the way. OKC is, is in seven. And then Denver is, of course, they sitting there. Of course, remember OKC and Denver lost. So that's something to remember as well. So that'll do it. On the right. That'll do it today for the Pelican Post Game Report. We appreciate y'all for chiming in with us today as the Pelicans will get that win tonight. So for me and DC, we like to say thanks and uh, appreciate oh, your support and everything. And also catch us for more shows uh, uh, Mondays at noon and Fridays at t- uh, 4 o'clock on our Twitter and Facebook pages. So from DC and myself, peace. Get ESPN or Fox. Get straight sports talk from the Sports Coma with Big Q and the guys. What's up, world? This is DC from the Sports Coma with Big Q and the guys. Have you ever been sitting in front of your computer screen, all in traffic, tired, lacking energy, feeling drained? Did you know there are electromagnetic fields or EMF waves all around you that cause this disease? Get it? This ease? Luckily here at Posh Lifestyle, you can get your EMF protection. They have pendants, the shell die bricks, cubes, and pyramids. Check out the PoshLifestyle.com. That's life spelled with a Y. P-O-S-H-L-Y-F-E-S-T-Y-L-E.com for all your health needs. So get your mind and body right with a Posh Lifestyle. Clear, clean, great tasting filtered water. We're all thirsty for it. But in the U.S. alone, an estimated 2.5 million plastic bottles are added to the environment each year in search of the perfect drink of water. There has to be a better solution, and there is. Crystal Quest, a leader in the manufacturing of water filtration technology, has been providing clean, drinkable water for 20 years. With a deep commitment to providing the highest quality products and excellent customer service, Crystal Quest has been recognized by such leaders as Consumers Digest, Dr. Oz, and Colin Ingram's The Water Drinking Book. Providing cost-effective, reliable water filtration systems for residential, commercial, and industrial customers worldwide, 
offering our customers the cleanest and most environmental friendly drinking water at a rating of high purity. With Crystal Quest's water filtration technology, you can rest assured that your water will be crystal clear. Contact our network of authorized distributors and join our thousands of satisfied customers. Just log in to theposhlifestyle.com. Once again, that is theposhlifestyle.com. You're listening to the Pelicans Post Game Report on the PRO Media Network for all things Pelicans. In today's world, children are bombarded with negativity on television, online, and at school. Our kids need to have a positive outlook on life and the world around them. I want to share with you a valuable resource you can use to bring positivity into your child's life. It's the new book, 101 Powerful Children Affirmations, a guide to positive child self-image. From author and dad, G.J. Barabino. This is a simple guide loaded with wonderful and inspirational affirmations designed to uplift young people's spirits. This positive and powerful children affirmational is chock full and loaded with wonderful inspirational sayings that will lift your child's self-image to whole new levels through the awesome power of spoken word. 101 Powerful Children Affirmations, a guide to positive child self-image. From author and dad, G.J. Barabino. Available on Amazon. Order a copy for yourself, your child's teachers, or anyone you know with children. 101 Powerful Children Affirmations, a guide to positive child self-image. Order your copy today. <laughs> 